again, mm -hmm. Michael from the from Mirrors of Consciousness, uh, and I'm going to talk about the orgfold a bit. Uh, so, a question I have not gotten very often, and I've kind of uh, wondered why I haven't gotten the question, is what is an orbifold? Why, why that name for the orbifold tarot? Um, to be perfectly honest, I don't totally understand what an orbifold is. I, I, I get the idea of it, but I'm not a mathematician, I'm not a physicist, um, I'm not even really a musician, so I can't totally explain to you what an orbifold is in scientific terms, but I can at least explain to you what, uh, what its application is in terms of tarot and in terms of the deck that I design. So orbifolds are this really complicated mathematical geometric thing that are in a way solely theoretical. They, they, don't, they don't really exist. Um, some of the simplest forms do um, or can be made to exist, but maybe don't necessarily exist in nature. So an orbifold is uh, a description of two-dimensional topography, a two-dimensional plane that is almost or is unlimited, but it is shaped upon limited, a finite, three-dimensional form. What the heck does that mean? How does that happen? So one of the simplest versions of that, yeah, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with, even if you don't necessarily know the name of it, is a Mobius strip. I don't have a Mobius strip with me, but I will attempt to explain it with this sheet of paper. So. If we take the piece of paper, the, the piece of paper is just a flat plane. And it has borders. If we go off the borders, then let's say we start here and we run to here, we go off the border and we go off the paper and it's gone. If we join the borders, and we see this a lot in computer games, very simple early computer games. If we join the borders so that we make a tube, but we program it, we, we look at it still flat, but we program it as if it's, uh, as if this edge joins this edge. Then, as I move from this edge of the paper, and I reach this edge, boop, I jump up to this edge, and I continue on. But then I come to this edge, and the tube is empty, or the tube ends, and so I run off the paper. So then, we can make this flat surface, this flat object, into a sphere by joining the other two edges and imagining that these bottom two the bottom and top edges are attached in a tube this way and these two other edges are attached in a tube this way. So it's a sphere or probably more correctly it's a torus, a toroidal um, structure, which I'm not going to get into, but those of you who are uh, into that kind of stuff, that's that's more accurately what, what that combination is. And so then I can start anywhere and I'll run down, and I'll go to here, uh-oh, I've reached this border, I jump up, and I go here, uh-oh, I've reached this border, and I start again here. And I can keep going wherever, really, in a straight line. I can go continuously in one straight line, but it never ends. So that's kind of what I mean by two-dimensional, infinite two-dimensional space confined within a finite three-dimensional space then it gets more complicated and kind of fun actually because even then even if we put the borders and connect the borders we're still always moving on this surface of the two-dimensional form so if it were a card let's say if it, it's this card i'd always be moving and we've we've set the borders so that these two boards are joined and these two borders are joined uh, I'm still always moving on the black side of the card, the back. 
but let's say I want to be able to travel on both sides of the card without having to go anywhere because remember it's two dimensional space and and I can't I can't jump over the the card uh, to the other side because uh, that would involve uh, a three dimensional uh, leap. So then that's the Mobius strip that I that I mentioned earlier, and you've probably played with these as a kid, where you take a strip of paper, you put a twist in it. Usually you start with a half twist, and then you join the ends. And then after you put that half twist in the paper and you join the ends, you can draw a line all the way starting on one side of the paper and you just draw the line continuously along the paper and uh-oh, by the time you reach the join, you're no longer on the same side of the paper. You're on the other side of the paper. You're on your way onto the back of the paper. But you didn't jump over. You didn't, your feet, your pen didn't lift up your feet if you were walking along the uh, strip. Uh, your feet didn't go anywhere. They didn't leave that, that, that surface. But now you're on the back. And then you go all the way around another full turn and you wind up back on the front. So that's really fun if you imagine that not only as a Mobius strip of this border and this border being attached with that half twist, but now imagine this border and this border are also joined with a half twist in that torus or spherical shape so now when you walk along and, and you, you go in your straight lines, straight lines on the sheet, now when I get to this edge, I jump not to the top on this edge, but I jump to the top on this side, and I go down the back, and I jump to the edge, and I jump on this side. And so I can continuously go on both sides of the two-dimensional space in within a three-dimensional structure. So that's sort of sort of what an orbifold is. What does that have to do with tarot? <laughs> Sounds very complicated, I know, I, I, I kind of get it, like I said, I kind of get it, but I don't totally get it. But what does that have to do with tarot? Tarot is kind of a representation of, um, of, of life. It's, it's, that's, that's how we use it, is, is that it's this two-dimensional representation of life. Well, life is not only three-dimensional, but it's at least four-dimensional, even if you only count the fourth dimension as time, which I do. I, I, I subscribe to that. The fourth dimension to me is time. So life is four-dimensional. Height, width, depth, and time structures. Um, but we have this actually uh, finite to these two-dimensional representations, but the way that they're ordered uh, through shuffling and through, through the various ways that we select cards, uh, at least when we select them blindly, um, is in that, in that randomness, we're actually jumping, you can think of, we're jumping across the orbifold, the, the uh, two dimensions of the tarot, we're jumping all over the, the two dimensions of the tarot without necessarily even having our feet leave the ground. And most of us will find that life tends to follow cycles. So it's, it's like you, yes, you're going two-dimensionally on, on this orbifold of the tarot, this ride on the tarot, um, but certain cycles keep recurring and recurring and recurring. It's like, it's like those old Hanna-Barbera cartoons where the background keeps looping around as, as uh, Yogi and Boo Boo run, run across the screen. It's kind of like, didn't we see that background before? Didn't we already see that? That's what our patterns of life tend to be, as they run in cycles. And they may not be completely the same as they were the last time, like a Hanna-Barbera cartoon, but they do seem to follow a pattern and a repetition, as if we're, we're passing through the borders, through the cycle, over and over and over again, in an infinite loop. Um, and so the tarot can help us kind of navigate that and, and look at that. So sometimes when you're reading 
um, tarot cards, uh, you can you can remember that loop, and instead of fixing your uh, spread positions as okay, this spread position is the past, this spread position is the present, this spread position is the future. I know that's a really basic spread, but almost all of us can, can understand that, and we use them, and and they're useful. Um, so we'll use that for for now. So it's not just this is past, this is present, this is future. Probably opposite because I'm, I'm mirroring, so it's probably the wrong way. But uh, it depends on if you read right to left or left to right. It doesn't matter. And actually, for my explanation, it's perfect. Because you can actually think of that three-card spread as looping itself around to the back or to the beginning again. And that loop goes goes continuously. If you have a more complicated spread that's maybe six cards or nine cards or whatever it is, however your layout works, you can think of the edges, wherever the edge um, of the spread is, you can loop it around back. And not only can you loop it back, but you can add, and I actually don't really read reversals when I'm laying out cards, personally. Uh, that's just just my the way that I prefer to work. But when I loop, let's say it's even only one card spread. I loop this card so that when I return to the card, guess what? It's upside down. I haven't changed the actual position of it, but if I think of it as being that loop with a half twist, with a twist, then the card actually flips around every time I repeat the cycle. And sometimes that flip, that's the way to um, to get out of the cycle or to begin a new cycle, to, to graduate from one cycle to the next. And it's not, it's not that the card coming upright or coming reversed is going to flip the cycle, but understanding that what that card, re card represents and, and its reversal, what its re reversal represents, that paying attention to both those aspects in your life, that's how the card is going to affect and hopefully help you. Um, so again, you know, how's that unique to the Orbifold? Well, it's not. You can you can practice that method with any 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 tarot deck, any spread. Um, but this particular deck, I think, lends itself to that style of reading, that style of perspective that allows you to turn your mind around in loops. And it happens to be fairly convenient that every card is represented by circles, by loops. And so you can imagine even the circles themselves on each card, you can imagine them not as two-dimensional circles, not even necessarily as three-dimensional spheres, but imagine them as at least fourth dimensional, because to go back and forth that involves time. At least four dimensional or even higher uh, orbifolds, spheres that are orbifolds, that you can travel along the sphere of even a simple one, relatively simple one, like the two of Earth. And you can travel around the, the spheres of uh, the two of Earth, both on the front surface or the, the outside surface, and get inside, because that each of these cards represents both your outer world, your day-to-day -day interactions with people outside of you, and they represent your interior world. And your exterior world and your interior world are not separate spheres where one is outside, one is inside. They are really, they're orbifolds. They're orbifolds where your outside experiences interact with your interior sphere and those experiences co coming in, they're not coming in on your surface. They're coming in into the interior surface of your sphere and the interior surface of your sphere is constantly folding itself back out into your exterior sphere and it's that interaction of the or orbifold uh, that is uh, what you experience. It's the combination of exterior experiences and interior experiences uh, that make up life, make up what you, what you navigate through. And so thinking of tarot and thinking of, um, well, thinking of tarot in general in that way, that 
every card that comes up, it's representing your interior experience and your out exterior experience. But not only that, it's actually representing the interaction of those. That, that fluid moving through. I can't move my hands through each other, but it's almost as if they're moving through each other constantly, not just around like my hands have to do, but moving right through. And I think maybe as, as readers, we, we understand that well, but sometimes our clients don't always understand that. Their questions are very much exterior world-based. They're, they're, you know, how, do, how can I make this person like me? Or why does this person hate me? Or uh, how can I get this job? Or um, all of those kind of things. And they don't necessarily recognize what their interior sphere, is, how their interior sphere is interacting with that exterior sphere. And it's both the interior sphere and the exterior sphere continually interacting, continually exchanging with each other. And so that's one way uh, to think of uh, an orbifold as a concept and then grasping that concept or maybe to help you grasp that concept, uh, you can work with the orbifold tarot.